<laughs> Today's drama, The Comic Strip Killer. <laughs> Two weeks ago, at a busy midtown intersection, a well-dressed middle-aged man shot uncertainly across the street against the red light. Hey, Mitchell, look out! You better get hit! Oh, he got it! Lucky the driver just raised him, though. Hey, mister, you all right? All right. Poor guy must have faded it. Holy smokes, this guy's dead! A week later... As the usual crowd pour down the steps of the public library at closing hour, an elderly woman starts down, then suddenly plunges forward headlong and comes to rest in a twisted heap at the bottom step. Too bad I almost have caught in the steps. Couldn't ask you all. You all right, madam? Madam? What's he doing? And just 24 hours ago in the police commissioner's office. And this is the third one, Frank. That body I just showed you in the morgue was the third victim in three weeks. Felt in the stands during Saturday's football game. One, two, three cases. Just like that. Well, accidents do happen, commissioner, sometimes three in a row. But these were not accidents, Lamont. What? No, Margot. Those people didn't die from being hit by taxis or tripping on the stairs or falling from football stands. No, then how? They were poisoned. Huh? When the poison took hold, they collapsed, and it just appeared they were killed accidentally. Are you positive, Commissioner? Of course I'm positive, Frank. Just got the medical examiner's report from the third office. And all three died from the same type of poison. But they all three have been suicides, Commissioner. I hardly think so, Margot. People don't usually take poison and then wander around the streets or go shopping. Were there any marks on the bodies, any indication of how the poison was taken? Well, that's the really baffling part of it. There were no marks at all, none. The medical examiner's going out of his line along with me. See what you mean. If this killer isn't picked up in a hurry, you'll have a lot of jittery citizens on your hands. You're telling me. All three murders took place in busy public places. It's obvious the killer likes to circulate best in a crowd where he can get lost there. You haven't done any theories, have you, Cranston? I might have, but I think it would sound a little ridiculous right now. Later, maybe. Well, come on, Margot. You and I have a little research to do. This is our day to be mysterious. <laughs> Play along with it, Margot. Even a Cranston theory is better than none. I'll uh, telephone you just as soon as something new turns up. And let's hope it's not another victim. Good luck, Commissioner. Thanks, Lamont. I can show you some. See you later, Margot. Goodbye, Commissioner. Well, Lamont? You like morgue, Margot. Oh, they give me the creeps. Why? And how about newspaper morgue? Oh, well, they're different. What would we be going to a newspaper morgue for? We might be going to read up on old comic strips, Margot. Well, Lamont, be serious. I am. Well, this doesn't have something to do with that theory you said you couldn't tell Commissioner Weston about. Mm-hmm. No wonder you thought it was too ridiculous to mention to the commissioner. It might not be as ridiculous as you think, Margot. Depends a lot on which comic strip you read. <laughs> just for the last 15 minutes. Don't you think it's about time you told me why this sudden interest in the funny paper? Yeah, I've been arranging these comics just so they fall in sequence for the past month. Here, look here. Hmm. It's Jack Prescott's detective story, sir. Yes, yeah, featuring his latest weird character, this time an elusive and deadly gentleman known as Hypo. Listen to this caption. Hypo. New type of killer who's traded the old-fashioned automatic for the modern hypodermic needle. Ooh, horrible. Horrible and fascinating to two million readers of four million on Sundays. It looks like an emaciated version of Boris Karloff. <laughs> Tall, thin, dresses all in gray, so it should be difficult to identify. Go on, darling. Let's see. He eliminates the victim for the hypodermic needle filled with a new... Fast working poison. It always attacks in crowded areas. Come on, you don't think there's some connection between those three mysterious murders and this comic strip class? I think there might be, Margot. Of course, we still don't know how the killer actually committed the murders, but we do know the victims died of poison and that they were attacked in crowded areas. Yes, that's true. 
Some crazy killer might have been inspired by this idea. Or some homicidal maniac is really taking these comic strips to heart. How oh, awful. Oh. This man who draws this character, this Jack Prescott, he must be practically a psychopathic case himself. Well, I understand Prescott's a very mild, home-loving man. He's one of the best liked cartoonists in the business. Did you know him, Lewis? Well, well enough to bluff my way through a social call. Well, do you think he'd be able to tell you if there's any basis for this theory of yours? He might, Margot. He has a studio over on Park Place. Why don't we go over and see? I'm afraid this uh, Prescott's not going to like this idea of yours very much, darling. He's a reasonable man, Margot. I think he'll admit there might be a connection between his comic strip and these mysterious murders. Here we are. Mm-hmm. I feel sort of frightened. Isn't that ridiculous? Not at all. After all, you're about to visit the birthplace of some of America's most notorious villains. Cyanide Susie, Wasp Waste, Gimlet Eye. Well, oh, hello, Harry. I'm... Mr. Uh, Prescott can't be disturbed. He's very busy right now. I phoned Mr. Prescott today, and he invited me to drop in, Harry. What's the name, please? Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane. Very well. Wait right here. Am I getting ideas or do you look something like Hyper? That's Harry Borden, Prescott's handyman. The story goes he serves as everything from Prescott's butler to chauffeur. He's supposed to have models for Hyper. He isn't exactly the kind of person I'd have around for a man Friday. <laughs> Mr. Prescott will see you. But don't stay too long. He's trying to make a deadline. Thank you, Harry. Come in, Margot. Mr. Cranston, this theory of yours. I know it sounds fantastic, Mr. Preston. Well, all I can say is that this gives me a new reason for wanting to get out of the clan comics and switch to something like that. But, Mr. Prescott, you've made such a great success in this field. Oh, thanks, Miss Lane, but I'm beginning to find it a little depressing, dreaming up monsters and ogres. A little exhausting, too. Exhausting? It may sound funny, but it's real work, dreaming up a bigger and better villain every month or so. I spend 12 hours a day, six days a week, Comics are a serious business, eh? How did you, uh, conceive the character of Hypo, Mr. Prescott? Well, a Dr. Murray Schumacher, he's a biochemist, first gave me the idea, Mr. Cranston. He's an expert on poisons of all kinds. Dr. Murray Schumacher? Yes. He gave me a lot of valuable technical material. Although I didn't tell him at the time, I intended to use it as a strip. I've been doing a little research on my own, too. Oh, I see. Uh, do you know where Dr. Schumacher's living now? Yes, I believe his laboratory is just outside of town on uh, Hillcrest Road, I believe. Yes, yes. He hates publicity, however. He'd be very upset if he became involved in a sensational story like this. I'm afraid personal feelings are going to have to go by the board in this case, Mr. Prescott. As long as this killer's on the loose, none of us are safe. Yes, of course, of course. I feel terribly that my work might be connected with these murders, Mr. Cranston. Now, if you or the police want any more information, please call us. We will, Mr. Prescott. Thanks very much for your help. Coming, Martha? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, keep in touch with me, won't you, Mr. Cranston? I'll, I'll be anxious to know of any development. We'll be glad to. Bye, Mr. Preston. Goodbye. So long. Poor man. He's really worried about this thing, Martha. He looks so tired. This way, please. Oh, he scared me. I'll show you to the door. I don't think that'll be necessary, Harry. I can see it right there. I don't know what your business is, Mr. Cranston. But if it has something to do with those murders, I suggest you go to the police. How did you know we were talking about the murders, Harry? I... I know everything that goes on in this house. I see. Remember what I said, Mr. Cranston. If you get me more ideas, don't bring them here. Understand? Yes, sir. I think I understand. Lamont? Hmm? Darling, you haven't said a word for ten minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, Margo. I was just thinking about our talk with Jack Prescott. And also the fact it might be worth checking the Harry Borden's record. Good idea. Where are we going now, Dr. Schumacher? No, Margot, not until I've had a chance to check on an idea that just occurred to me. That sounds very much as if you're going to drop me off at home. I am, darling. 
I'll call you in the morning after I've done a little scientific research of my own. Yes. 
Poison kills the undesirable. What? Yes. Like trees, insects, animals, people. The non-desirables are eliminated. Remains only beauty. I see. Uh, Dr. Schumacher, the real purpose of my interview is... I have a collection of notes entitled Timetable for Death, telling to the fraction of a second how long it takes for certain poisons to take effect. I'll get it for you. And it's us see. Shadow. I hear you, Mark. I'm scared. He, he sounds absolutely mad. Hold on for a few more minutes. There's something I've still got to find out. Don't worry, Margot. The shadow is watching every move. Now you will see how accurately death can be calculated. I'm fond of the title. Timetable for Death. It's like looking at this kitchen of trains. Slow and fast ones. But all of these tricks are one way, Charlie. You see, there is no round trip. <laughs> you, you have a laboratory, too, I suppose, Dr. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to see the latest specimen from my laboratory? Of course. Uh, would you see what happened to this creature? Besides the poison, you will have something worth writing about. I get it. Oh, Dr. Schumacher, please. You scared me to death, my mind. I've almost forgotten about it. <laughs> that plan will spare for the reasons for the rest of the day. Excuse me a minute. I'll get someone who can get this. All right, Margot, get out first. Shadow, I have no time. Never mind that now, Margot. Just get out of here. Hurry. <laughs> Lamont, I don't get it. Dr. Schumacher is just about to tell us something important, and suddenly the shadow decides to call it off. Why? I realize you're talking to Dr. Schumacher. It's a waste of time. We have a far more important thing to do right away. You get more puzzling by the minute. I'll explain everything later, darling. Right now, we're going to Prescott Studio. There's something I've got to find, and this time, we've got to work fast. <laughs> What in the world can Lamont have on his mind? Whatever it is, I hope he doesn't take too long finding it. I didn't like this studio before, and I don't like it now. So... Very interesting. 
I, I didn't hear you come in. You seem to be confused, my boy. You're not talking to Mr. Prescott. You're talking to High Boy. Uh, uh, listen to me, Mr. Prescott. Notice how I move around the room swiftly, noiselessly, like death itself. It might interest you to know that I'm receiving $5,000 in advance to have you, shall we say, to race. Mr. Prescott, please, sir. Oh, the young lady. An unscheduled job. This is going to cost them extra. The double feature is tricky. Sir, uh, put down that instrument. Listen to me for a minute. One minute I always, and one thing I always pride myself on is neatness. No gut, no knife. That's why Hyper was the highest paid killer in the murder racket. Mr. Mr. Prescott, look at me. It's, it's me, Harry Ford. We're going to handle the whole thing. I shouldn't see him. Mr. Prescott, please. Forgive me, young lady. I'll take the job. No, I say, Mr. Buddy Swift, you'll hardly feel it when I'm just the poison. You've Yes. Now you, young lady. No. Quickly, we... What? What happened? Oh. Someone's holding my arm. <laughs> Who's holding me? Who are you? This is the shadow. Shadow. Another killer as elusive as the great hypo. Shadow is no killer, Prescott. I'm here to keep people like you from killing. You'll never stop me. I'm the greatest of them all. A modern murderer who injects death with a hypodermic needle. It's merely a horrible distortion of your mind, Prescott. I'm not Prescott. I'm hypo, the great killer. You've killed, yes, but you're not a killer. And murder in character is only a creation of your overwrought imagination and exhausted oh, brain. I pose a great killer. Your an artist whose bashful mind has played a terrible trick. I pose a great killer. And you'll pay for your crime, not by death, but in an institution. Oh, I pose a great killer. mental exhaustion, Prescott's mind snapped, and he reverted to the character of his own creation. Real schizophrenic. Good personality, huh? What about Harry Borden, Commissioner? Is he going to be all right? The doctor said he'd pull through okay. He got a load of the same stuff Prescott got. Yes, he did. You see, Harry found out the truth about Prescott. In a loyal effort to shield his boss from suspicion, made what looked like an attempt on Prescott's life. So Harry was the one who attacked Prescott? Yes. Actually, the stuff Harry shot in the Prescott must have been a watered-down toxin or a powerful set of things. It's the same stuff that was left in the syringe when Prescott went wild and tried to kill Harry. Oh, I see. I still don't understand how you discovered it was Prescott, Lamont. Well, Dr. Schumacher was out. It hardly had been a swift, elusive killer with a bad case of asthma. Oh, of course. And I remember that Prescott said he was doing research on his own. So I went looking for a private laboratory. And when you found it, you found the knockout stuff? Yes. A good deal more, too. I found the key to the whole case. One of the mysterious murder weapons. Look. That looks like a small flashlight. Called a hypo spray. It works on the basis of a high pressure air gun. You hold it against the skin and it, it blasts fluid painlessly through the pores. The patient doesn't even feel the injection. So well, that's why the victims didn't know they'd been poisoned. And why there were no needle marks in their bodies. A hypo spray? Well, it must be something new. It's so new, Margot, that the first real publicity about it's in this week's Life magazine. There they done. Well, Cranston, I guess I'll have to take back what I said about your comic strip theory. That's all right, Winston. Uh, Colonel, I hope this doesn't set a new trend in crime production. Mm-hmm. I have trouble enough getting through all the police stories on the front page without having to comb the comic strips every day. <laughs> Oh.